Hello, and welcome to theCUBE here in Palo Alto, California. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE. We got some news here. SaaS, global leader in data and AI, has acquired Hazy Software Assets, pioneer in synthetic data technology to strengthen their continuous innovation with data and their AI portfolio, their VIA platform, uh, all, all the rage. Of course, theCUBE's been covering their event for a few years. Brian Harris, EVP and CTO, back on theCUBE. We just saw you in the NYSC uh, for the AI leaders uh, uh, series we're doing there. Brian, great to see you. Thanks for coming on. John, great to be here and great to see you again. Uh, some really exciting news, as we mentioned, around synthetic data. So you, uh, last week, you teased it out a little bit on the <laughs> CUBE interview, talking about synthetic data, of course. Well, and I said, you know, make sure it's not, uh, you know, inbred data, which was the big comment in the Wall Street Journal from Andy Kessler. There's a real concern around data quality. You guys have been on this. You've been, you've been talking about synthetic data now for two years, digital twins mm -hmm. in the manufacturing area. Now digital twins is becoming a uh, um, horizontal concept for all process. Um, so this so software acquisition is interesting because it kind of adds to your portfolio and your vision in the company around how you can scale up the data. So I want to get into that, but first let's get into the, the hard news. Take us through the acquisition. What was it about? I know the price wasn't disclosed in the press release. Uh, what specifically happened? Well, uh, Earlier this year, we, we announced our foray into models, independent models being sold directly to the market, right? AI models. And as you know, great AI requires great data. And unfortunately, most customers struggle having great data. And really there's only two ways to fix that. It's either to find more or better data or with this new emerging technology of synthetic data, how about we create data that is statistically accurate to the real data. And if we can do that, we can lower the cost of developing models and also at the same time, improve the accuracy of their performance in the market. So fundamentally, that is the, the why we did this acquisition. And Hazy has some incredible software assets that really are pioneering in the market in this space. Talk about the acceleration of SaaS platform. I know we did a deeper dive on our last interview, but this acquisition kind of points to that innovation around synthetic data you mentioned. Why is it valuable? You've always had the perspective that regulated industries and sectors like healthcare and finance have kind of been set up for this Gen AI wave. What does this synthetic data do for SaaS customers? Can you share the, the upside here and, and how this kind of connects to what you've been working on? Yeah, I mean, I think with uh, with specifically with generative AI, then and this can be a form of that, by the way. If you take like banking industry, where uh, if you need to build systems, for instance, associated with ATM machines, uh, you really don't want to test out your models on uh, on uh, public data or real data. You want to be able to take a cut of that data and really um, take it and run on data that, look, that looks exactly like the real data without ever divulging any of the privacy information. And that's exactly what synthetic data allows us to do. We can train basically our, our uh, AI on the real data and preserve the privacy and by creating synthetic data that behaves in the same manner as the real data. This is incredibly important in regulated industries like banking and life sciences and manufacturing and many others where really having that isolation and being able to preserve privacy while being able to develop strong, accurate and uh, AI models, it's so important. And I would say too, that when we talk about things like uh, the insurance industry, where, uh, or even like I said, in, uh, even in healthcare, you really want to make sure that your data reflects the constituency which you're trying to make decisions for. In this case, many times it's people. And so as a result of that, synthetic data also allows us to drive more representation in the data so that the models make more accurate, fair decisions for the broader population. So it's important from a governance and trust perspective. It's important from a lowering the cost of training models. And it's, a, and it's important from an improving the performance of models. SAS has got a great track record with customers. You guys have a huge client list, you've got deep research, you've got analytics pedigree. Um, you guys have been building reliable systems for a long time and no strangers to machine learning, that's well documented. How does this hazy acquisition tie into the platform modernization that you've been going through as we move into this privacy kind of compliant AI world where there's a real competitive advantage around having the right AI and the right data in the applications while maintaining a cost structure, because what we're seeing is cost overruns. You know, I'm training stuff and I got to retrain, I got to pull that back. There's not a lot of observability. These new data solutions are need, 
are needed at a global scale. How do you guys intersect that privacy compliant, competitive advantage on the business side and the business transformation while keeping the cost down? Well, I think that if you think of, uh, if you think of data, right, as being the, the critical um, underpinning to AI models, then it, synthetic data lowers the cost of creating data, which should lower the cost of creating models. And by the way, lowers the cost while also improving the accuracy of models. When we uh, first announced our, uh, our private preview of SAS DataMaker uh, earlier this year, we had a huge demand from our customers in the field who wanted to look at this, play with this. We actually did some key POCs. One of our customers presented at our, our SAS Innovate con conference around leveraging synthetic data to improve their model accuracy by 40%. That's the kind of impact you can make with synthetic data. So you get incredible benefits if it's used appropriately. Now, the trick on this is to have the features that are needed to make synthetic data look as accurately as possible to the real world data. And that's where the advanced features of the Hazy acquisition really come in. We're gonna be integrating in this technology into our core portfolio. So you're gonna have access to synthetic data through our entire data and life cycle. You'll have access through it through our solutions. You'll have access through it to actually train our independent models we deliver to the market. It's gonna be uh, woven throughout the entire portfolio. What's the timing you see this um, impacting you guys in terms of availability, preview, access on a global scale? I, I see us uh, between six and nine months having it fully integrated into our entire portfolio. I'm sure it'll be a topic at the uh, conference you guys are yes. going to have later this year. You kind of tease it out. All right, I got to ask about the market right now. The AI innovator right now is really getting all the focus and attention. It's coming down from the top and growing bottoms up with the developers. How is, will this AI wave with, with this kind of synthetic data redefine the industry of the next few years? And specifically, what are the safeguards and ethical guidelines you guys are prioritizing? Well, I think again, this is this speaks. So let's talk about let's talk about two parts of that. One is let's talk about the productivity we can do that you mentioned to the developer. I think the synthetic data in, in, it increases the productivity of the developer, no doubt. If you want to go build a model with AI, you need data to train your model. By providing really easy point and click, um, you know, ability to configure the data you want to create synthetically, and then being able to use that to bootstrap and train a model. That's just going to boost productivity for developers in, in incredible ways. So that's a, an easy slam dunk value proposition. The second one is if you think about the democratization, if, if now if we give organizations to create data that's statistically accurate to their real world data, we're really democratizing AI even further for organizations. They can go in and, and, and create data that typically might even be more difficult to create, uh, might, might be very cost of, uh, costly to create. And now some are lowering the cost through the synthetic data offering that allows them to compete now with maybe companies that are much larger in size or that have the, the gravity of data already in their organizations. Today, you know, a lot of the cloud providers and large, large, large organizations have this kind of uh, gravity of data and they use that to their advantage. Synthetic data gives power back to the small guys and the midsize and even larger businesses to compete on an equal footing. You guys have a billion dollar investment uh, across the company. You guys have a great business model, throwing up a lot of cash, nice acquisition. What was the motivation, Brian, behind this? Was it you guys were watching these guys, you saw their technology. What was the, what was the opportunity to go after this and tuck it in like this? Was it the technology? Was it the synergies with what you guys were doing? Take us through the art of the deal. Well, I'll tell you, we have been uh, researching synthetic data for about five years now heavily. Uh, we started out doing a lot of work in generative adversarial networks, doing that uh, area and creating tabular GANs and things like that to create some uh, structured data. But when you put operationalize synthetic data for organizations, there's a lot more that has to come with it. There's the you know, life cycle management of synthetically generated data. There's the assessment of it. How, how, how much does it correlate to the real data you trained it on? Uh, there is the scaling of it, right? How much can I create and how quickly can I create that? There's just a lot of those. There's things like differential privacy, a lot of cubic joins. How do I create synthetic data that needs to be uh, represent tables that are separate in a database, but have join uh, pr uh, primary keys for joining and foreign key relationships? These are the capabilities that Hazy really pioneered in the market and that we're bringing into our portfolio. And we're so excited. So when we saw these capabilities, we just had a choice of whether we want to build or buy and it just made sense. These are these are not only is the technology uh, great, but so are the staff. The the people in at Hazy are experts in the field. Um, they come from university environments, building out the stuff. So 
They're just grounded in expertise and their technology reflects that. And it's going to fit perfectly into our entire portfolio. So for us, it just allows us to accelerate the innovation to the market and, and really deliver uh, better synthetic data outcomes for our customers. You know, cultural fit's always a big part of uh, acquisition. Sounds like it was there. Looking forward to digging into this, uh, Innovate, your conference. I just want to close out and try to quickly just loop back to the VIA, uh, the VIA platform and the data maker product you mentioned. Is that the key to success here? And what's the impact of the customers when they see this integrated and what do they expect to see? Well, it's definitely going to be part uh, and fully integrated into SaaS data maker, which will then also be integrated into various uh, services into the overall portfolio of platform solutions and models. And what really it's going to mean for customers is that they're just going to be able to innovate faster at a lower cost with models that perform better in the market. And we are confident that between Hazy now working as part of SaaS, we're going to be the leader of this in this entire synthetic data space. This puts you guys right in the forefront. Brian, any final thoughts on the reaction so far you've been getting? What's been the buzz? Uh, I think that what we're seeing, actually what I love seeing in the market is, you know, peers um, acknowledging the uh, kind of the strategic value of this move. I think others are looking at this very clearly. You know, synthetic data, in my opinion, is uh, lar at large is really, it's not a feature. Uh, it's, not, it's, it's a feature, not a solution. It's gotta be part of a larger ecosystem. So I think that us, looking at one of the leaders in the space, emerging leaders in the space, bringing them into our portfolio, I feel like we're just going to be further ahead of the market than many others at delivering this cohesively throughout our entire um, data and AI platform solutions and models. You know, it really fits the void when you don't have that real-time information. Uh, it kind of allows you to do those simulations along the digital twin concept as processes become yeah. really key. You can actually do a lot of work prior to moving stuff into production. Uh, What's, what's your kind of takeaway as, as a CTO and looking at the business more broadly, where does synthet synthetic data really hit the mark for customers when they're trying to understand how to apply it, how to get their arms around it, how to kind of integrate it into their operations? Well, if, it, if, I, if it's done right, which we, I believe we are doing, uh, I think this is a, the start of a multi-billion dollar area of, of the market. It's going to unlock a massive opportunity. Uh, for us, it is critical for our models um, product line. So when we talk about selling independent models that are not LLMs, these are foundational models for deterministic things like fraud detection, document vision, and other things. Uh, you need good, strong synthetic data to make sure those, those models come out of the box performing well. And so for us, this is a critical first step in capturing uh, really billions of dollars of revenue uh, over time with, with synthetic data and AI models. Yeah, it really drives that reliability and scale. Brian, thanks for coming on theCUBE. I know you've got a lot of interviews and you're busy. Thanks for taking time to zoom into our studio here. Appreciate it. John, as always, thank you. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Brian Harris, EVP and CTO at SAS. They're a global leader in data and AI. Their portfolio products, their models. They've got the platform, integrated code base. Everything is working across the platform. The synthetic data brings in a new element to kind of bring better accuracy, more reliability, and allow people to do the planning necessary to bring these kind of capabilities, these high quality solutions to the market. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE here in Palo Alto. Thanks for watching.